This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. The final four in the NCAA Division I men's basketball tournament will get underway on Saturday. The first game at 6 p.m. will showcase Bahamian Lou Rawls, Tum Tum Nairn, and the Michigan State Spartans up against the Duke Blue Devils, with the winner moving on to the national championship on Monday against the winner of the other semifinal between Kentucky and Wisconsin. I don't know what to expect because I never played in the Final Four. I never played in an environment like that. Uh, but from former players and just watching it on TV, I know as a kid, you know, especially being from the Bahamas, uh, everybody don't get to do that in their life, you know. Uh, some people go their whole college career without making the Final Four, and uh, I'm getting to be a part of a team in my first year in college. So I just want to thank God for that experience. But, you know, we just want to go out there and continue to play the best basketball we've been playing. You know, we have nothing left. It's, it's one or done. It's win, it's win or go home. But uh, we expect to go out there and play our best basketball, and I'm looking forward to it. The New Orleans Basketball Association's best of seven championship back on court last night at the AF Adderley Gym. The PJ Stingers were on the verge of taking a 2-0 series lead on the Patron Regulators, but with under two minutes to play in the game, the Stingers would blow a nine-point lead and end up on the losing end of a 101-97 scoreline. Kenneth Pratt had a side-high 27 points to lead the Regulators in the win. Cordero Thompson added 18. Gamillion Rose had 15 points and 11 rebounds. Cruz Simon fall with 14 points, while Alex Roll, he finished up with 11. In the loss for the Stingers, Abel Joseph had a game-high 33 points. Devin Ferguson added 20, while Vernon Stubbs finished up with 11. The series now tied at one game apiece. Game three set for next week, Tuesday, back at the AF Adderley Gym. Aqua Rift track and field team met one final time last night at the original Thomas A. Robinson Stadium, getting some last-minute instructions ahead of travel today to St. Kitts. Head coach John Ingram and b 3 s boss Mike Sands were both upbeat as Team Bahamas looks to improve on last year's seventh-place finish. During the week, past weeks, we've been um, working on sharpening athletes and working on their speed, their turnovers, their explosiveness, and right now. The guys are really good to go and they're ready to perform for the Bahamas. Friday morning we would expect that maybe they'll do a little small shake out at the track, just go to the track, visit it, get familiarized with the warm up area and everything else. Uh, and then there's opening ceremonies Friday evening and there's also a few events on Friday evening so our kids will start seeing competition as early as Friday evening and we go straight through and there's a schedule for two sessions a day which will be Saturday, Sunday and Monday and the games conclude on Monday after which um, we hope to take the kids on a tour on Tuesday morning and return to Nassau on Tuesday afternoon and hopefully you know with a wonderful performance by these young athletes. Now while our Carifta track team is in St. Kitts, our Carifta swim team has made its way to Barbados. That team got a final work in yesterday under the watchful eyes of coach Andy Knowles. On it and uh, we did the points a little bit based on the psych sheets. And um, just looking on paper, it looks like, you know, be more of a challenge or more of a, a battle between us and Barbados. Um, so because of that, that's last year was us in Aruba. And, uh, you know, we went right up to the last day and we, we won it, uh, broke out on the last day and jumped ahead to about 100 points. Uh, we had a couple, like I call, breakout swims. So going down there, it looks pretty much like a battle like last year. And uh, we're looking at starting off strong in the first day, see if we can get a lead. And then as the days go by, see if we can have somebody step up and do something really extraordinary to, you know, excite the team and um, help us to try and win it again. Now, when our swim team travels to Carifta, they are usually accompanied by a water polo team, but that is not the case this time around. The water polo was unfortunately cancelled this year because there were only three entries from the entire Caribbean. Water polo is a growing sport, and because um, a lot of countries find it very expensive to travel to Barbados for water polo, um, they rank swimming as a higher priority. But unfortunately, it was very disappointing for our swimmers that they are unable to de defend their second place um, finish last year in Aruba in water polo. So what we are excited about is that um, while the water polo team unfortunately will not be competing in Carifta, they've identified other meets in the United States where they continue to develop and train for next year's Carifta. And what Coach Lottie has done is he has a very young team grooming them to be able to swim water polo or participate in water polo for the next few years. So the water polo team under Coach, um, Coach Lottie's direction 
We're doing extremely well. I'm very happy for the services here in the Bahamas. The English Caribbean Amateur Softball Confederation took the Bahamas by storm last weekend, and tonight Charles Fisher has some feedback from the visiting teams. It was a festive weekend for the first ECAS men's fast pitch softball tournament. Four teams, including the Bahamas, playing between the white lines. Arnold Liston from the VVI had a good time, a third place finish. It, it was a great experience. Um, it is a start that I think was, was needed at this level. We're so accustomed to going to, the, to Latin America to play, and um, sometimes we feel like outsiders. But now we're amongst brothers all speaking English. We really wanted the experience for the young players, and I, I think we got that. I know they got a little frustrated today, but um, apart from that, I, I think it went well, and I, I think they have a lot to, to build on. We have a good young team, so we're in a position now to build a nucleus for, for future, um, future years and for, for future players. Cayman Islands Association President Marlene Moore, despite the team finishing fourth, was pleased with the hospitality. We don't usually play um, fast pitch in the Cayman Islands, they play modified pitch, so um, it was an experience for them to come here and um, be able to play against um, the other teams that um, pitch much faster than they do, you know, so I think they, they got a lot out of it. I think that they, they, especially the pitching area, that's where we are lack a whole lot, so based on, on that and seeing the other guys pitch, it really helped the um, the pitchers here, so we can go back and work on that. And um, next time when we come at, then we should be a much better team. We are, we are looking forward to coming back next year. So um, we enjoy Bahamas. The people, nice and friendly. Um, I enjoyed. This is my fourth time here. Runners up Aruba and Calvin Sylvania, despite losing 15 to two to the Bahamas in the championship game, pleased with the way things turned out. This is a very important tournament, my first year playing international ball, um, so it was a good experience. Um, never saw pitches like that before, so um, it, went, it went good. We're going to still go back home, practice every day. Um, we're going to take it. We got a competition in Colombia and see um, if we could take first place there. For ZNS Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. Well, a one-day boat show in honor of well-known captain and sloop sailing pioneer Emmett Monroe will tell, take place on Monday at the Potter Ski Dock between the hours of 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Regatta consultant, the Reverend Dr. Philip McPhee, says such an event is long overdue. It is really uh, the landmark on what we are trying to achieve in terms of information uh, to the Bahamas on on the sloops of our country. As you're well aware, we are in the process of trying to make the sailing our national sport. So every facet of the development of that idea is important when the white paper is presented to the cabinet. This one is paramount and important because uh, we honor one who has given so much to sailing in the person of Captain Emmett Monroe. While he's still alive, healthy, uh, sensible, intelligent, gifted, and um, able to smell his flowers while he is still alive. So that's important. And then we measure, uh, it gives us a yardstick to measure others who we will honor uh, by honoring him who sets a high precedent in terms of recognition. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight comes back after the break. This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.